We'll start with the situation in Ukraine as Russia says it is ready for a prolonged conflict there as its forces continue to make progress in the east of the country. The Ukrainian Defense Ministry said the offensive was in its most active phase. And Moscow said it would continue until all its objectives had been achieved. Our correspondent Jeremy Bowen reports from the front line in Ukraine's easternmost region, Luhansk. The Ukrainian army could be fighting a losing battle in Luhansk. They're committing reserves to the front line. Russian firepower is destroying towns and killing Ukrainian soldiers. One unit went into the line with 240 men and came out with a hundred of them killed, wounded and captured. Bakhmut is a town getting slowly eaten by the war. This week, it's around three miles from the Russians, well within range. Next week, it might be much closer. Civilians with somewhere to go have left. In the ruins in Donbass, the victory in Kiev in March, the euphoria, glory and sacrifice feel distant. Where's the ceasefire, says Mitri, even if it costs land? What could it change for me? The main thing is to stay alive. This is just the beginning. Everything is still to come. If we survive, we'll see how it goes. At a safe distance from the front line, civilians were brought to a railway platform for evacuation. Most were too weak and too old to leave before the war swallowed them, and now they're wounded. Lida was rescued from ruined Severodonetsk, almost surrounded by the Russians. Thousands of Ukrainian civilians are still there. The train's been transformed into an ambulance and intensive care unit by MSF, Doctors Without Borders. The intensity of the fighting means the train is running at close to full capacity. The medics work continuous back-to-back -back trips. Relative safety in Lviv is 20 hours down the track. It's an escape capsule from a war that's so hard to predict that the medical teams only know who's coming in the last hours before they leave. Sometimes they're wounded the same morning. Mikhailo from Bakhmut was on the train six hours after he was hurt in an airstrike. I saw our soldiers standing nearby and crawled towards them. Then I realized my strength was leaving me and I wouldn't be able to crawl. I got up and started screaming. Even when families survived with them, the lives they led are smashed. My husband and I have lived together for 51 years in peace and harmony, and now it ends so badly. I guess we're running out of time. Yasa Kameledin organizes the train. Evacuating the wounded is vital for the Ukrainians as the war in the east intensifies. The hospitals closer to the front line are overwhelmed, are receiving uh, continuously uh, big numbers of patients beyond their capacity to cope. So it's very important for us and for the Ministry of Health here in Ukraine to make sure that these hospitals are always ready to receive more uh, patients, especially war wounded. This war is much more organized now than it was back in February when it started, not just medical evacuation, though what they're doing on this train is really remarkable, but also where the decisions are made the generals, the presidents, you get the feeling that they've settled in for a long, hard, attritional struggle. The Ukrainians don't talk much about their own casualties, but the graveyards in the east are filling up, and their president says up to 100 soldiers a day could be dying in Donbass. He says only diplomacy can end the war. His allies, led by the US and UK, want to weaken Putin's Russia permanently. Their critics say they'll fight to the last Ukrainian. The currency of war is blood. New graves are ready. As they're filled, more Ukrainians will question the blood price they're paying and ask how much 
a ceasefire will cost. Jeremy Bowen, BBC News, in eastern Ukraine.